Hello YouTube, hello Twitch, Maven here. Welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. We're currently live on twitch.tv slash mavenphoenix. Link down below if you want to check it out and hang out on Saturday afternoons. That's when we do streams. And today, we are playing some Murflock. We got a new Murfolk Lord out of Dominaria United. And could be a potential Lord to play in Modern, but I thought, you know what? Pioneer has lacked Murfolk Lords. The only Merfolk Lord he ever had was Merfolk Mistbinder. So now I think that this thing's going to make much more of an impact in Pioneer than it would in Modern. So we're going to do some Pioneer Merfolk today. And having both of these Lords and being in green is going to be awesome with Collected Company. Everything in here is companyable. And uh, yeah, let's just go through it from the low curve to the high curve. So Benthic Biomancer and Kamena Speaker are going to be our one drops of choice. This thing can adapt for one for paying two mana and loot for you. Turn into a 2-2. Two, two. This thing is already a 2-2. Two, two. Come in a speaker. If you have an island or another merfolk, this thing gets plus one, plus one. And then Silvergill Adept and Merfolk Branchwalker are going to be our annoying cantrip merfolks. So it's going to be 2-1 for two and cantrip. And this thing's going to... The gnats are still here in this video. Yeah, they're not gone yet. Merville Branch Walker explores when it enters, so you reel the top card of your library and you put it into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, you put a 1 1 counter on Merville Branch Walker. So either cantrips or it gets bigger. Two really good things. And then Merville Trickster is going to be a, you know, tempo effect tap down a blocker, tap down an attacker, clear the way for us. And then. Copala is going to be a Cura the Great Glass Spinner, but for Merfolk, so it makes it harder for the opponent to target our Merfolk. And then Kumena herself is going to be able to tap three untap Merfolk to draw a card, or tap five untap Merfolk to Gavany Township. So she's just like, can buff up a Merfolk. She can also be unblockable by tapping a Merfolk. So really good powerhouse right there. And then finally, Glasspool Mimic, because we're only running 20 lands, this is going to be our 24 lands right here is going to be four glass pool mimics. And I think that that fits really good with having eight lords because it gives you a really good thing to clone. And then also you can hit glass pool mimic off of collected company. So I think it fits very well in here as a play set. Now, Vodalian Hexcatcher has Flash, which I actually didn't even know until right this very second. Um, but it also has Sacrifice of Merfolk to counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays one. So it's a very annoying. Hex, what it, what is it called? Hex catcher ability? What is the card even called? Hex catcher? What is that one drop merfolk? It's not hex drinker. That's the snake. I forget what it's called. It's hex something. But yeah, it's basically that, but for all merfolk. So it can be a really annoying tempo spell to stop sweepers. Curse catcher. That's the one. And then um, we got, yeah, 20 total lands, not counting the glass pole mimics. Just a combination of a bunch of, of random junk doesn't really matter because, you know, the Kamena Speaker doesn't technically need an island. We just need to control another merfolk, so we don't need too many islands. So that's why we only got a singleton. Onto the board. We got Witness Protection um, to nerf things in the 1-1s, so good against, like, green and stuff. And then we got Tidebinder McGee. That is there for the mono green deck, so it enters and you can, like, tap down a green creature or a red creature forever. So also good against mono red. Mystical Dispute for blue. And then Brazen Borrower is just another tempo bounce spell. And then Entrancing Melody can gain control of creatures. It's going to be good against things like Ledger Shredder. And then we got Unlicensed Hearse for the graveyard for like the Is It Phoenix decks. And with that, we are ready to get onto the gameplay. And as usual, as we find game number one here, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to TCGplayer.com, the best marketplace on the internet to get your Magic the Gathering single sealed product and accessories. Anything magic related you wanted, they got out the variety of sellers all across the nation so you can pick and choose the best prices for you. Anything you purchase through our deck list link down below or our TCG player link down below will support the channel. And also shout out to the mana traders for making it possible to purchase or to buy, to even use decks like this on Moto because it costs a fortune to buy cards. But with mana traders, for an affordable monthly fee, they allow you to rent and play all the decks on Moto that you'll want to play. Absolute lifesaver. If you want to play some Moto, you should check them out. Link down below with a code in the description for 10% off. And then also, finally, shout outs to our Patreon supporters who have helped financially keep this channel afloat all these years. It wouldn't be possible without you. Their names are scrolling down below. And uh, if you want to go the extra mile as well, Patreon link down below. I will revamp it soon, probably in the next month or two. 
Some things will change there, but relatively the same for the most part. And with that, we are fine in game number one here. Let's do it. And also, um, for those who are here on this YouTube channel just for Pioneer and not Modern, I might as well shout out the same thing I did before, but let me know your opinion. So I finally messed around with NVIDIA broadcast and it really improved my audio. So now you probably don't hear any background noise, but I can have background blur. So as you can see here, it looks like I'm in front of, uh, it looks like I'm in front of the green screen, but it's blurring my background. So does it look better like that? Or does it look better normal? So let me know your, your opinion in the comments down below. And, uh, we got a game number one here against Gazerma, and this looks like it's going to be a keep. Looks very saucy. Very good hand. Couldn't ask for a better hand. And we're going up against Is It Phoenix right away, because this is literally all Pioneer is. It's just 50% of people playing Is It Phoenix, and it's really aggravating. <laughs> and that is why we have a bunch of sideboard cards for it. But leave your predictions in the comments. What is the record going to be for this deck today? I'm going to say four and one. I think this deck's going to be really solid. It seems like a very strong powerhouse of a deck. All right, let's just straight up slam the Lord, I think. Probably going to get killed. But what you do with Merfolk is you just slam dude after dude after dude. That's all you do. And there's Fire Prophecy, and they do not loot. And Fable the Mirror Breaker. So this is not Is It Phoenix, it's just like, is it Control? Is it like a Transmogrify deck or something? Alright, so what's the play here? I'm going to name Merfolk. Um, I'm thinking I swing and threaten to adapt. Yeah, let's do that first. Come on, block it, block it. All right, they're taking it. I'll just let him take it. And then we'll go with Kumena Speaker. And then we'll just hold up Merfolk Trickster and tap down the Shaman before it swings. We're going to loot with the Fable. What? World Spine Worm? What are we fight? It, it has to be Transmogrify, right? Or is it like a... Is it like a pig deck, uh, Illarg? It could be Illarg. Like a Illarg Breach. And they have a counter spell. Yep. If they attack her, they obviously want the treasure for their Indomitable. Um, well, even though I'm aggro, I'm blocking this. I don't want them to keep making treasures. Fiery Impulse. Ah, so lame. So lame. I didn't think about that play. All right, well, I have collective company. Um, I could hold it up as an instant, but I know they're holding up Counterspell here. I think I still just do it as an instant, even though I could more likely resolve it now. I think I'm still just going to hold it up. All right, let's do it now. See if we can get a Merfolk Trickster to tap down their dude. All right, Vodalian Hexcatcher and probably Merfolk Branchwalker. For those who, who don't know, Glasspool, like if you get a clone off a company, it has to clone something that's already in play and there's nothing in play right now. So it wouldn't have anything to clone. All right. Branch Walker trigger, and what do we hit? Trickster. I get to put it into my graveyard. 
Um, I think I'll top it. Another potential card that I considered for this deck was Jade Ranger, which is like Merfolk Branchwalker, except for one more mana and explores twice. But I think I prefer the, the cheaper mana cost for aggro purposes. And another Fable. Like we mentioned in Monday's video, Fable dominates um, all the formats that it's in. <laughs> dominates... Um, I imagine standard. I don't follow standards. I don't know if it does, but it probably does. Standard, pioneer, modern. I don't know if it dominates historic because I don't follow that either, but I assume so. It's just ridiculous. All right. Very tough to beat, Fable. I draw a card of Silvergill. Bendic Biomancer. All right. Um all right, I'll I'll offer the, the trade, the double trade. If they want to double block this, that's fine by me. They're just taking it. Alright, bend the biomancer and go. They know I have a trickster. They get to loot. All you really need to win a game of magic is just get back to back fables. Like it's it's a ridiculous enough card to get there. All right, Murpho Trickster. Tap down a Goblin Shaman. Oh, they're not cloning? They could have freely cloned and got a free treasure there. But all right. I guess I want to leave it back as a blocker. I wish I had a Muta Vault right now. That'd be great. But I couldn't feasibly put it. Oh, there's the Indomitable. There's a World Spine. Saw that coming. All right. Um, I couldn't feasibly put a Muta Vault in here because... Uh, This deck is too mana dependent. Like there's like double blue. There's like some like the this blue green card. It, it would hurt it too much in the early game. Um, I think I loot with Bendic Biomancer. Try to get another Murpho Trickster or like a Kamena would be nice. Okay, there's a Trickster. That's what I wanted. Ah, oh, but the the dang the. The reflection of Kiki can clone the world's fine. That's so lame. <laughs> and it can do it instant speed. I wish this should say activate only as a sorcery, I swear. It's a broken enough ability to just put the text. Oh, activate only as a sorcery. Come on, Watsy. Power creep is real. Alright. Um, well, they're gonna get three five five worms, and I'm losing. Um I can tap that down, and then they're gonna only have two blockers. They're going to be able to block Branch Walker and Benthic Biomancer, and then they're going to take seven, and then I die. It's over. It's just over. I'm not beating that. Man. Okay, well, Entrancing Melody seems pretty good. I can, like, steal the Reflection of Kiki for two mana. And, oh no, wait, it's going to count as a three drop, isn't it? Yeah. All right, give me Mystical Dispute, maybe. Tide Miner Mage can forever tap down that er, that Kiki token. I honestly don't know what to bring in here. Like, Mystical Dispute can give me a counter spell for the Indomitable Creativity, but that's red. I would have to pay full mana for it, which I'm not about to do. Tidebinder. I'm thinking Tidebinder to just forever tap down that Kiki Goblin token thing. 
And then I can cut like some filler, like branch walker. Is silver gill better than branch walker? Probably. Um, hello, Bert, Bert's should have fought over the creativity. Thoughts on Merfolk with kicker that steals stuff, uh, thieving skydiver. There's really no artifacts to worry about in Pioneer, so I didn't run it. All right, Mulligan the Zero Lander. All right, that one we'll keep. And I guess I'll bottom one of the Lords because we have too many Lords here. I'll bottom a Mistbinder because... Hex catcher's ability is actually relevant here. All right, Murph Lock. Let's go, Miss Binder. Same play as last time. There's the impulse. All right, let's go with Tide Channel Pathway and let's just attack. The Valdalian Hex Catcher has Flash, so I'll flash it in if I need to. If not, I think I'll just activate Bendig Biomancer's ability. The Ottawara could actually come in clutch here, potentially. It's time for... Okay, Gnome Fable the Mirror Breaker. Alright, let's uh, use this guy's ability. Voldalian Mind Singer. Another Benthic Biomancer. Rending Volley. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to do the same thing. Benthic Biomancer. I know, right? Fable. I could counter that, but I'd have to sack both of my dudes. Is that worth it? I don't think so. I need to draw a Tidebinder Mage and, and tap that guy down. All right, let's do a thing here. All right, discard Ottawara. All right, shock. Play Kamena. Mystical dispute. All right, I'll counter that. And what am I sacking? <laughs> um, do I sack my tutu or my lord? I think I got to sack the. I think I got to sack the Benthic Biomancer. I was considering sacking the Lord. Now I have a 3 5 Kamena. Can I get a Coco, please? They discarded an Indomitable Creativity. They don't have the red for it. They need another red source.
fire prophecy. Well, I'll counter unless they pay one, so it depends on if they want to loot or not. They do not loot. Okay. Field of Ruin. Been a while since I've seen that card. That card doesn't see play anymore like it used to. Miss Binder. Okay. Uh, let's swing. I'm not going to make it unblockable. Let's just swing. If they swing and get a treasure, so be it. But that's giving them the red they need. All right, they're blowing up my land there. I get an island. I assume that's Japanese for island. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. Just swing with me for 30 trample. All right. Yeah, Indomitable is going to be a tough one, no matter if we're playing Modern or Pioneer. We, like, on Monday's video, we, um, we fought Indomitable Creativity twice in one league. And then we fight at game one here in Pioneer. It's just ridiculously tough to beat that card it's it's very very strong it's like it's just four mana get a 15 drop it's like literally four mana 15 drop like how what are you supposed to do like that's the kind of card that wasi just shouldn't print it's ridiculous But good thing, harsh evidence is not in Pioneer. I'm pretty sure that's uh, Modern Horizons, right? Because that would just make the Pioneer and Domo Creativity deck even more crazy. Gives you two targets and a good blocker. Harsh evidence is great for it. Probably a little bit less consistent in Pioneer, since Fable of the Mirror Breaker is like your main thing. Like, it's hard to get Dwarven Mine online. I mean, not really if you're Mono Red, but I think going is it is probably the play. Um, there's also Transmogrify you can run, so you have a, a backup. Oh, Valdalian Mine Singer. Now I can read it. Um, when it enters the battlefield, two woman counters it for each time it was kicked. When it enters the battlefield, gain control to our creature with power less than Mind Singer's power. Uh, that's not bad, but it's too clunky, I think. Like, you need five mana for it to, like, do a lot. If you do it for three mana and it enters as a 2 2, you can only gain control of something with one power. But if you have a lord, you can gain something, gain control of something with two power, which is not terrible, but it's just a very loose sideboard card. It's not flexible enough, I don't think. All right, game number two here. Wait, this is game number three, right? Against a Gigantha deck, and this looks like a really good hand. All right, we're going to start on Benthic. No, this is round two, right? I think this is round two. All right, I'm still predicting a four and one. I think this deck is really, really solid. Um, but red, oh, just as I jinxed it, but red decks are tough to go up against because in Pioneer right now, the red decks are running so much one drop removal, like, just like that. It's really tough to beat. Did I get the gnat? I don't think I did. Um, but yeah, the red decks just have so much one drop burn. It's hard to, to deal with. All right, let's um, play Silvergill and reveal Copala because Voldalian has Flash, so I don't want to reveal it because it can be a surprise. Balmore. Hey, that's what I'm playing next week on the channel. That's spoilers. All right, 
let's play tide channel and let's go to combat and swing see if we can catch them off guard with the voldalian all right they're not taking the bait um so i think i'll just go for copala because copala um gives my guys a kira effect and protects them so want to get that online sooner rather than later this might be the play like Maybe going up to three Copalas is the play because like just so many people want to play interaction and this thing just says no. So that that might be like really good to have like even a set of them. If only Villain was in Pioneer. If Villain was in Pioneer, it would see so much play in everything like outside of Merfolk, but it would make Merfolk especially like really insane. Alright, this one gonna be for three. We'll take it. And um, I could go for Coco here, but I think I'd rather just go for Double Lord. I think Double Lord sounds pretty tasty. And they can't target anything because of my Kapala. Kapala's so nice. Like, I just love... Kira the Great Glass Binner is one of my favorite modern cards just for the reason of like, because I, I I hate going up against interactive decks, getting my stuff killed, and just being able to have a card that just says, no, don't touch my cards, it's great. So I, I really, if I build this deck again, I'd probably go try like a set of this, because just having one on the table just makes you feel so much more secure. One of, one of mine? Of one mind, what's this card? Two less to cast if you control a human and a non-human. I guess they do. Draw two cards. I mean, I'm not gonna about sack three things to counter that, so you do you. One mana draw two, not bad. As close as you can get to Ancestral Recall. Ooh, it's another Lord. Or would I rather just Coco? <laughs> if I Coco, they could potentially counter it. I feel like I'd rather just go for another Lord here. And just smash. Um, I don't want to risk Voldalian Hexcatcher, I don't think. So let's just get in with these. Yeah, because like one spell will double prowess up the soul scar to the point where it can kill the Voldalian Hex Catcher. So I think this is fine. So now the soul scar is a 3 3, and Balmor is a 2 3. Any more spells? Like they, they for sure have like a wild slash. Or another, or like a Reckless Rage, or like something. Fiery Impulse. They have something, but they just cannot use it. I guarantee it. A Lightning Axe, maybe. And they have to chump chump. This is beautiful. You know, I could have just swung all. The reason I could have just swung all is because Kapala and... And uh, Silvergill are lethal, so they're forced to block, like, they're forced to chump, basically. But then again, they could survive on, like, no, they couldn't, they, they literally have to block the two biggest things. So, yeah, I'm a dummy, I should have just alpha'd there. They return their Balmor to hand, and they trade. Okay, well, play a, a Bendic Biomancer and pass. gotta be a scoop there's no way they have main deck anger young pyro i mean maybe they can live here with young pyro okay never mind not anymore all right i'm just straight up going to coco here see if i can get like a tapper like um Merfolk Trickster and tap down their guys and just alpha. Spell pie, that's fine. Thanks for the information. 
but now they got information too. That's fine. Like I'm, I'm not even gonna sack to Voldalian Hexcatcher. This is just game. I could have countered that and resolved it, but it's fine. It's game. All right, on to the board. Um, Tide Binder seems pretty good. They have a bunch of red dudes. Um, Witness Protection's not bad. Nerf their guys a bunch. Brazen Bar Entrancing Melody is pretty decent. Because they really don't have that high of creature density. I don't think I need Entrancing Melody. I think Witness Protection's fine and Tide Binder. Yeah, we can cut Branch Walkers filler. I guess just cutting the cantrip creatures is is the play when we side things in because they're technically the filler. But I really like the cantrip creatures. Probably more than Kamena. It just feels wrong to cut a bomb like Kamena though. Yeah, I'd rather keep in some silver gills to like hit my land drops. I'll cut Kamena. Kamena's like very resistant to removal though. It's a two four. It's got a pillar filled ox butt, but it it also dies to reckless rage. All right, we'll keep this. This looks good. No one drop creature. Good for us. Shock and play, come in a speaker. It's already a 2 2 because I have an island. Ledger Shredder, that's tough. All right, well, let's play Tide Channel and go to combat and attack. They are taking it. All right. See, because that's so cool. Because Voldalian Hexcatcher is a um, a Flash Lord, you can do plays like that. It's so beautiful. This thing is going to be so hyped for modern. Just having a Flash Lord. It's definitely going to replace one of the two drop 2-2 two, two Lords for sure. It's having that Hexcatcher ability too. The, the uh, curse catcher ability for all your your merfolk. It's going to be so good. Play with fire. Alright, so they're going to kill off Kamena Speaker. I could Glass Pull Mimic and clone the Silvergill, draw more cards. Alright, we'll take it. Island and I think I just attack and then glass pull, but they can but they can potentially Oh, this is bad. They could potentially Have like a removal spell and then I'll have nothing to clone But if they had a removal spell there, I'm sure they would have used it, right? They they surely would have used a removal spell there if they had one So I'm just gonna do it that I'm pretty sure they don't have a removal spell. They actually, they actually do. They actually have one. There's no way. <laughs> Why did you not play that last turn? You could have wiped my whole board and got another prowess trigger and gotten a connive trigger. Why did you not do that? <laughs> that makes no sense. Why would they not do it? I don't understand that play. All right, well now we probably lost. Yeah. I can play some ground dudes, but they're flying over me there. All right, that's unfortunate. I think we just run it right back. 
The Tide Binder Mages should be good enough. Entrancing Melody and it's still a maybe. Brazen Borrower is not terrible, but I think Tide Binder and Witness Protection should do the plan. Should should do the job. All right, we had two lands. Yes, this is fine. All right, play Benthic and go. We got a one drop creature. Okay, they're just passing. So clear the courtyard, uh, Merfolk, and go to combat. And yeah, let's just let it go. And at, at their end step, I'll activate Benthic Biomancer's ability or flash in my Lord, um, potentially. I could have just thrown out a Tide Minder. That was a potential play as well. All right, young Pyromancer. I would like a witness protection for that. All right, let's uh, ult this guy and ditch. What are we ditching? A tide binder, I guess. And then we'll tide binder. But that guy's ability is about to be real annoying. You're going to make so much chum blockers. It's going to be obnoxious. If I can get my fourth land here, that'd be super epic. And now two of them stacking together. This is going to be ridiculous. All right, go to combat. Swing both. Rending volley. I can't counter it. Okay, I could Coco, and I could try to hit a Copala. Can we hit a Copala, please? Yes, we can. Uh, we're grabbing Copala, and I think Glass Pool, and cloning the Tidebinder. They're not even going to double block. All right. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Double Young Pyro is going to be tough to beat. But I feel a lot more cozy with Kapala. Oh, a triple. How are we going to beat this? <laughs> and then one of mind. That card seems super good in there. Don't tell me I have another one. <laughs> is it Dex just dominate? <laughs> like whether it be, is it Phoenix? Is it Pyromancer Blitz? Is it, um, and what it call it? Indomitable Creativity. No matter how you slice it, is it, is it is just broken? All right, well, I think we're just gonna swing, swing, swing. And then when they try to like double block my stuff, I'll just flash in double lord. Okay, they know. They know. They are aware. They are woke. They know we have double Voldalian. This is a little sketchy. This is a little sketchy, not gonna lie. They did a very sus play earlier and they just did a very sus play again. 
I'm, I'm a little, I don't know what to think about this. I'm, I'm somewhat convinced there might be some stream snipery going on here because they did two very sketchy plays that it's just like, why? Remember that play from the, uh, from the last game with the, when they had the Balmore out and they, they waited on the burn spell when they very obviously should have just fired it away to like get more prowess and, and get another trigger when it was their turn, get that momentum. Like there was no reason why they should have saved it. Well, it's over. We're not beating triple young Pyro, so let's just scoop it up. But yeah, not gonna lie, that game was a little sus. That that player, they were making some plays that is just like, how did you know kind of plays. All right, well, I don't see their name in, on Twitch here in the chat. However, like I said, there's people who have different usernames on, in Moto on Twitch than they do on Moto. So there's no telling. All right, so if uh, back to back is it decks, can I please see something other than is it? That'd be nice. Is it decks are just so hard to beat. Is it is just very good. So we fought. Is it indomitable? Is it pyro? And now next we're gonna fight. Is it phoenix? I guarantee it. <laughs> okay, it's getting kind of hot. My AC went off, so I'm gonna go turn it back on. All right, chat. My NVIDIA broadcast background noise reduction is so good. I'm about to turn on my industrial fan. Tell me if you can hear it. Do you hear that? Do you, do you current, do you guys currently hear my super loud industrial fan? Yes or no? Cause it is very loud next to me right here. I feel like the NVIDIA broadcast noise reduction is so powerful that you that you don't hear this fan. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna turn it off though because it's like blowing my hair in my face. All right, we're going up against Victor Carvalho. I feel like that's a name that I've heard before. I don't know where. This is a very painful mana base, but I'm going to keep this hand. No sound of the fan. Yeah, I'm saying it's very silenced. NVIDIA broadcast is great. Maybe the next stream, I'll put my fan like right there so that if it's like, it it'll won't blow my hair in my face. It'll just blow it back. All right, we're going against humans. And this is a very painful mana base to have against Humans. And also, you definitely want a one drop if, to like keep up with them. But I didn't. This is the very first game of the league where I didn't get a one drop in my opener. So that's a bummer. All right. But um, this Silvergill add up is about to be really nice here. Yay. We got a painless land. All right. Silvergill, and we will reveal. Probably Kamena, because we're about to play it here. Another Vidalian Hexcatcher, nice. I feel like we can definitely keep up with them here. Can tripping, playing these guys that can freely trade. Kamena's going to have a fat body. Declaration of Stone, that's fine. It just depends on if they have a Banalish Marshal. It's going to be tough to beat that. All right, the train up hit us for four. Oh, that was a good draw. Okay, so now let's get out our Kamena Fat Pillarfield Ox blocker. You know, it's funny that Pillarfield Ox might actually be like a solid card to play in actual formats. Ah, uh, Brutal Cathar, they're popping off. All right, Secluded Courtyard. I'm doing a good job of hitting my lands. All right, let's go for 
um, Merfolk Mistbinder, and then I'll just like flash in the Lord and like eat something. Coco's not a bad option, but like it's a little bit too risky right now because I cannot afford to whiff, so I'd rather play the thing that I know will work. All right, let's flash in our dude, old alien hex catcher. And I think I will just try to eat the hopeful, but I think I'll just take the two from the other guy. And it works, nice. They only have two cards left. Branch Walker. Okay, we're going to go for the safe play still. Go with the Branch Walker. And then we can flash in another Lord. Um, another Branch Walker. I'll put it in the graveyard. You have Maya. And then we'll go to combat. And I'll swing with the Merfolk Mistbinder. And if they want to block, I can flash in a Hex Catcher and eat it. If they have any shenanigans, I can counter it with uh, Voldalian, with his ability. Yeah, they know what's up. They know what's up. All right. Going to flash in this other Lord. Hit him for four. And now we triggered Night Oh, it's chopped down. No, I could have countered it. No! I clicked too fast. That's how most of my misplays happen on Moto, is I click too fast. I have my, um, for those who don't know, I mentioned this before, but my OK button is binded to zero on my numpad, and then my always yield is binded to um plus and then enter is um i don't know i don't know off the top of my head but i use them all subconsciously all right we'll take the two here Another Dauntless Booty Guard. And another Hopeful. All right, Kapala's nice, but I'd rather just hold up Coco here. So let's pass and hold up Coco. And when they try to go swinging in with a million things, I'll possibly get some surprise lords. Because also, there's the possibility of hitting... Um... Oh, they flipped their guy back. Now they're going to be able to steal another thing. That's annoying. That Brutal Cathar is getting way too much tech. Oh, the Giant Killer is going to be annoying too. Yeah, Glass Pull Mimic. That's what I was meaning. So that I can like clone a Lord. Um, yeah, I think I just clone a Lord here. So let's just get Glass Pull. And then we'll clone Voldalian. All right, we'll block there, 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 and there. And they didn't tap anything with Giant Killer. Can I just eat their whole board, please? Do I get my stuff back? <laughs> A Ganjo. No, it's going to first strike off. But my stuff still eats their other guys. All right, um, so, yeah, we just go to combat and swing all. We're not dead on the back swing, so we can just hold up Coco again.
All right, Coco time. All right, um, we'll get Branch Walker and Silver Gill. Get two cantrips, really boost us ahead. These cards are so good in this deck. It's having these free cantrip dudes that are still beefy. It's great. And they're scooping it up. Yeah, two five fours that are cantripping. All right, Entrancing Melody seems nice. Um, witness Protection's not bad. But it won't deal with the Brutal Cathar's ability, though. I think <sighs> Entrancing Melody, probably. And then Witness Protection is kind of iffy. There's stuff can get counters and stuff. Like, I, I don't know about it. Um, Even though they did have some interaction, Kapala still seems like it's not the play here. And, um... Brazen Borrower is not bad, but I'd rather have Branch Walker over it. All right, we'll just run it like that. All right, still no one drop, but there's an Entrancing Melody. We'll keep this. I honestly feel like I just play the Mimic as a land here because we have nothing to do on the first turn anyways. But it could it could end up being a mistake, who knows. Yeah, now that I just drew another land, I think I'll just save it to like play it as a clone. Silvergill's always really good in these situations, and Merfolk Trickster can buy me some time for sure. Thalia's lootin'. Yep. Once that Thalia's attendant grows really thick, I'll steal it with entrancing melody. All right, Island, Silvergill. We'll reveal Merfolk Mistbinder. Kamena Speaker, not bad. All right, Luminarch Aspirant's pretty good. I would love to seal that with Entrancing Melody. Now my blocks are sucky here. Another entrancing melody, dude. All right, secluded courtyard, merfolk, and then I'll just go come out a speaker, and then I'll hold up um, trickster. Do I swing? Probably not. I mean, I should, but I'm I'm in no rush right now. To fat dunes. Deck in stone. All right, that works. And just play in a giant killer straight up. They grow their lieutenant. All right, they're growing that dude. All right, let's flash in our trickster. Tap down lieutenant. Do I double block this? I don't think so. All right, now it's time. We start stealing stuff. These giant killers tapping things are going to be really annoying, though. I feel like at some point I'm going to have to steal one of those, even though I can't activate its ability. 
I think we steal the Luminarch and start growing our guys. All right, let's put a counter on Silvergill. Stay back. I honestly might want to steal Giant Killer over Thali's Attendant. Just having multiple tappers is really annoying. They're going to be able to get us with that by like EOT, tap two things, untap, tap two things, swing. Shafat Dunes can't be activated here. I think I just double block the Thali as a tenant. Or do I double block the giant killer? Mm, probably the lieutenant. I'd like to steal it, but I can just steal the giant killer. And brave the elements. That's what I was fearing. So they eat my dudes. It's going to be tough to recover from that one. Um... I think I just entrancing Melody on the Thali's Attendant. And I tap down Luminarch. Counter on itself. Yo, I can Glass Pool Mimic my own Thali as a tenant and just play humans myself. <laughs> And is that lethal? It's not. All right, we're going to one. Their tappers are going to be really obnoxious here. Good thing I have double Biomancers. So I think we just go double Benthic and Merfolk Branchwalker here and just get as much bodies on the table as we can. All right, green, blue. All right, put a counter on Mistbinder. And just stay back. They can go end of turn tap, untap, tap, and then activate Muta Vault. And I still have three blockers after that, but they're going to be able to eat my guys because they're going to force me to chump. This is tough because they could have an interaction spell and screw me over here. And if I triple block, I'll be able to kill the giant killer for sure. But I'll be losing Luminarch Aspirant. But at this point, I think I have to be willing to lose it. It's not letting me change the order. Whatever. I just got to be willing to lose it. All right. So they trade for the Luminarch Aspirant. Cave of the Frost Dragon. That's going to suck. All right. So they, they put me to the test. Now I literally have to pressure them like I've never pressured before because I'm going to die to this Frost Dragon in one hit. So in that case, we just glass pull on the Mistbinder and go in. They're going to tap a thing. I can only swing with two things. Otherwise, they tap down one guy and then attack with Muta Vault. So I can only attack with, with these two. 
And I have to loot here with the Biomancer to grow it a bit and get some more damage in. Like, this has become a race. Oh, Trickster's pretty good. That can save me from the Frost Dragon if they don't kill me here. So I'll, 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 I'll keep the Trickster. Can also tap down a potential blocker. We can possibly get lethal here. Come on, we are right there. Don't fight. No! No, they found the land. No, they found the untapped land, dude. Lame. Okay, um. Do I bring in witness protection? Do I bring in brazen borrower? I don't think so. We're on the play. We can we can really pop off on the play because we've been on the draw both games here. So now that we're on the play, we can turn the tides. Okay, that looks good. Again, like we've drawn one drops every single game against the is it players, but now that we're going up against opposing aggro, we cannot get a one drop on the first turn to save our lives. All right, tap land, go. Hopeful. All right, Silvergill revealing Silvergill. Man, I love Silvergill. Helps hit your land drops. Maybe not this time, though. I'll happily trade. I already got value. I got my card draw. I win that interaction. And they're stuck on one? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, let's reveal Mistbinder. Still not hitting my lands, but it's fine. We have so much beef coming to the table soon. It's going to be hard for them to keep up. Yo, Arent Arentis. Thank you so much for the follow. Arentis Arentino. Um, I'll take this one. Giant Killer is annoying, and it can be annoying later, but they don't have a lot of mana to spare right now, so it's, it's fine. All right, another Trickster. Can I get my land, please? Yes, I can. All right, cool. Um, I'll offer the trade here. Start getting aggro. They got a trade now before my guys grow from the Lords. Nope, they're not trading. All right, they're 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 adamant that they're going to win this race. Luminarch. Good dude. They grow the giant killer. That is a little annoying. But they're actually getting frisky. Yay, I got to land. All right, so I'm just slamming double lords here. Not even thinking about it. And if I can Coco into some glass pool mimics, we're in, we're in business. Swing for eight. And this trickster is going to be clutch as well. They're staying back and keeping up their tapper now. All right, so Cluded Courtyard is nice. Gonna name Murflock. And I think I just straight up Sorcerer Speed Trickster, tap down Kytheon, and then just like get in. I think I do that. And then I follow up with Kamena second main. Rave the elephants. Dang it. They have pro blue. So do I have any reason to swing now? I don't think so. But hey, guess what? Now I can activate Kamena's ability. And tap five Merfolk to put a counter on all of them. So that's nice. 
Or I could also tap six Merfolk to draw two cards. But I think I'd prefer the 1-1 one, one counters. So just stay back here and just buff up the team. Extraction specialist to return hopeful, but it can't block, that's fine. And they're going to put a 1-1 one, one counter on extraction specialist. Opponent, I'm about to bop your face. Hand a glass pool. You know what? I Okay, I can potentially hit more off Collected Company. We'll do that. A glass pool can just clone a Lord straight up, and that, that'd be nice. But this is the potential funner play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll take double Lord. That is a swole table right there. Now let's just alpha. <laughs> that is some swole fish. What's up, Wolfenheim? All right, finally got there. Now we're now one and two. We're going to get this three and two right here. Oh, real shroom. You, your name got fixed. Yo. It got, wait, was that your exact name before you just changed the capitalization? It's just different. Um, it's just differently capitalized. Or is it like a brand new account? Because I'm pretty sure that's the same name you always had. It's good to see you again. Hello again. How did the goif work? Oh, what's up, Arentis? Welcome to the stream. Um, goif was... It was all right. We didn't get many opportunities to use it. Um, I feel like I wasn't the right shell for it. I feel like it could be very good in a different kind of strategy. All right. Um, yeah, that's that's a keep. It's fine. See, we can get a one drop on the first turn if we go up against anything but mono white humans. Every other time, every possible game, we get a one drop on the first turn, but just not against humans. All right, Bloom and Marsh. What could this be? Oh, it's going to be Grease Fang. All right. Go to combat. We're getting for three here. Turn off all auto yields because I now have a piece of interaction. Grizzly Salvage. Dang gnats. They're going to be gone soon. Like I said, I dealt with their breeding grounds. I, I've ordered more traps on Amazon to clean up the rest of them. They should be gone as soon as I get those traps. I've had to order five sets of traps from Amazon at this point. They're, this is the last time, I swear. This, they're going to be done. All right, so we lost next turn because they are going to get Grease Fang, so... Opponents not slamming it. Maybe they don't have it. Gonna slam the the, the slam the rat. No, they don't have it. All right, cool. We have more opportunities. All right, let's just glass pull mimic here. And we'll copy our Voldalian.
All right. Um, do we have lethal? Yeah, we do. we have Exaxi's lethal here. If the opponent cannot produce a board state, Seder. Okay, they have a chump blocker now, unfortunately. But if we draw our fourth land untapped and we can Coco and we can hit a Lord plus a Tapper or two Lords, could potentially get it here. Dang, these gnats won't stay away from me. Copala. Okay. Well, I think I just glass pull. Clone the Lord. Go to combat. Swing for 11. They can chump the, the Kumena. They're down to five. All right, so if the Grease Fang comes down, it might not actually be the end of the world. Because I have a Tapper. I have the Trickster. So I can tap down one of the Angels. All right, Grizzly Salvage. If they go land plus Grease Fang, I think we still have a chance. They did find Grease Fang. Okay, so there it is. We're not dead. Wait, they make four angels, right? Or only two? Only two. Okay, so that's fine. All right. I think we still win here. Yeah, we trickster. Tap down an angel and get in there. They're scooping it up. All right, onto the board. Give me... I mean, it's going to be too late for witness protection once the Grease Fang hits, so I don't think we bring in that. Tidebinder doesn't hit anything. Mystical Dispute is going to be too clunky. Brazen Barwer can... Potentially bounce the thing before they use it. And unlicensed hearse can hit the parhelion out of the grave. So these can help. And the filler is branch walkers. Just leave a banana in the quarter. That'll, that'll keep them out of your face. Yeah, just put a banana over there. But then that'll attract more of them. I'm never buying bananas ever again, not until I move. I've been looking at other states. I have some considerations. Um, I think I have a good idea of what state I'll move to next. I can go wherever I want. I'm a digital nomad. Come on, opponent. Wait, actually, I don't want Kopala here. Give me some branch walkers back. And also, I might not even want Kamena. I think I'd rather have branch walkers for consistency. Wait, why did I didn't bring in a tra I didn't bring in a trancing melody? No, what's that about? Dang it. I didn't bring an entrancing melody. And now I have it in my hand. I should have just left it alone. Now I have a useless entrancing melody because Moto's buggy. Um. Alright, I have the graveyard hate. I have a lord. I have a way to clone the lord. Alright, I'll keep this. Oregon? No. Not Oregon. All right. So personally, I think the top three states 
are Washington, Utah, and Colorado, but they're not cheap. So I have to save money before I can live in those places. All right, let's play the glass pole shore. I really hope the entrancing melody is just somehow clutch here because it's okay. I don't mind stealing Arathine's informant, but could be better. All right, Silvergill revealing Kamena. I'm about to clap this mat next time I see it. And now it's not here. I don't know if I got it. The cheapest states to live are in the South, but yeah, no, I'm not going to the South. I'm never moving to the South. Not a fan. I went to the South once to visit and I didn't like it. <laughs> also, my, my mom lives in the South. It's because she's, uh, my mom's got a redneck family in Kentucky. And so she moved out there. Come on, Raphine. Do your job. There we go. <laughs> All right, I'll happily trade. Um... All right, let's just go with Kamena because Kamena can block um, the Raffine. Good old Pillarfield Ox, such a good body. Pillarfield Ox has the best body. Got a massive butt. But also respectable power. Abrupt decay. I think I might still hold on to this uh, to this entrancing, mel entrancing melody, see if they want to just throw out a Grease Fang for nothing, and then I can probably gain control of that instead. So let's play this Tide Channel, and then I think I'll just play the hearse and then flash in the Hex Catcher. Eat some things. I should have saved it up, just in case they had that reanimation card. I should have held it up. Seder Wayfinder, sure. There's Parhelion. All right, play the Boldalian. Well, 
Coco. All right, I feel like I Coco right now, like sorcery speed, just to see if I can hit a Lord so I can swing here. I think I'm gonna do that. All right, Miss Binder and Hexcatcher. And swing. And then follow up with the Benthic Biomancer. Hold up the hearse and pass. We have a lot of interaction on the table. Potential curse catcher effects. Graveyard exiling effects. Essica's Chariot. Okay, in response, Exile, Parhelion, and Raffine. Oh, no, wait. This can counter non-creature but No! This can counter non-creature spells. I thought it was just instant or sorcery. No! That would have been perfect. No, I threw. No way I just threw. Dang it. They were hoping I didn't see, I didn't notice. Dang it. They see, they're, do you see them stalling right now? They're just surprised. They're relieved. They're like thanking whatever deity they believe in right now. Okay, so I think I can just, oh wait, I don't have any, oh no, I don't have any legends. Um, dang it, I threw, that's a bummer. Okay, Um, I can Entrancing Melody to steal a cat for two, and then I can tap down Raffine's Informant. With the trickster. Okay, thank goodness. They scoop it up. I almost threw there. I really almost threw there. Hello and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. For those who do not know, we have to keep the video under two hours long for rendering reasons. And sometimes there's just a game in the league that goes very, very long to the point where we have to speed it up to keep the video under two hours. So this is one of those times. So if you want to see the full game on sped up, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD from last Friday, usually on Saturdays, but the set just came out. So it was a Friday stream. And we are going up against, uh, if I get a Nykthos, I win dot deck. And game number one here, they do not find a Nykthos, so we have a fighting chance. They do get a Karn and a Kiora, and they do have plenty of mana. However, there's no Nykthos, so they can't go popping off with Storm the Festival, flashback Storm the Festival in one turn. So we're able to take that one down because they let us kill our walkers. We had too much beefy attackers, and we had constant, like, Merfolk tricksters, and the Ottawara was clutched to bounce something, and they just... We had too much tempo, and they just couldn't keep up any blockage. Game number two here, the opponent gets a one-lander, but they do have a billion mana darks. But I get a pretty slow draw. I don't have a turn one play. I do have a bunch of good two drops, though. I just got to keep up. But the opponent does get another Kiora and Karn, but this time they go for a Heart of Kirin play. And now the Heart of Kirin's fine because I have tappers, I have bouncers. I'm able to tap it down with a Merfolk Trickster when they go to activate it. And then when they go to activate it again, I have the Brazen Borrower to bounce it. But then the third time's a charm for them because they are, they're able to trade with the Heart of Kirin. They do trade it off for one of my guys, one of my lords. I do offer up one of my lords for it because it just I can't stop attacking or else the green deck's just eventually going to go off. And now they do not find a Nykthos for a while, but this is the point in the game where it's kind of like a very back and forth. It's kind of a top deck war, but I am getting nothing but lands. If you notice here, I draw like... 10 lands in a row like i am literally drawing nothing but lands and the opponent is top decking bombshell after bombshell after bombshell like they go they top deck vraska they're in top deck mode as well zero cards in hand they could top deck vraska minus abrupt decay mode i kill the vraska 
And then they go top deck Oath of Nyssa, which finds them another Vraska. And then unfortunately, I do not have enough attacking creatures to be able to kill the Vraska. And it's able to take up and start sacking the useless Oath of Nyssa to start drawing cards. And then eventually, they do end up finding the Cavalier of Thorns, which finds them the Nykthos which allows them the mana to play another Cavalier of Thorns, and then eventually Storm the Festival, Karn, all that good stuff. And that is where it gets out of hand and gets ridiculous, because all you need to win in Pioneer is a single Cavalier of Thorns to find a Nykthos. And uh, yeah, as soon as that hits, there is no chance to win. And we are going on to game number three here. And uh, we do, I believe, Mulligan. It's, it's kind of a slow hand, but we do have Witness Protection, which can deal with an attacker but the opponent is going off with walkers again and out of left field they pull out a teferi a teferi that i didn't even know existed i don't even know the name of it but it's a four drop teferi that they're able to play because oath of nissa allows you to spend any um colors on walkers so they're able to play an azurius planeswalker in a golgari deck and that thing just generates way too much value and i just I'm not quick enough. I think I ended up getting mana screwed or something. I don't remember, but I'm not quick enough to keep up with the Teferi value. And at that point, the opponent just slowly but surely gets the Nykthos and the Cavalier, and we can't compete because of Storm the Festival. And with that, let's go on to the wrap-up. Let's take a look at this deck. So I think this deck's great. I think this deck has a lot of potential. Um, I feel that I'm happy with the main deck, although I do want to try putting in a third, possibly even four Kapalas, and I wasn't that big a fan of Kamena. The thought of Kamena sounded good, you know, like you play it and then like any future Merfolk you play, you can just like tap them to draw cards and just keep on going off that way. But that never really happened and we didn't get many chances to even try it, to be honest, but it could be cool. But I feel like it's kind of mediocre for its mana cost. Um, I think that its body is good against a lot of things. But having Kopala on the table just made me feel so much more safe against a lot of decks. Just making sure that they're not going to kill our stuff or that if they do kill our stuff, it's going to take their entire turn to do it. I, I just really like the Kopala a lot and I would run more of them. So I think that is like basically the only thing I would change. I don't, I don't think there's anything else that I would really do because the deck seems pretty set. Like you got your two solid one drops here. Like having the four silver gills and four branch walkers really help with the consistency of the deck. Although some people might want to cut branch walker for harbinger of the tides. And I understand that, but harbinger of the tides is not going to be useful in every matchup. It's only going to be in some matchups and I'd rather just run merfolk trickster, which is always going to be a flash guy and only for two, whereas harbinger of tides would only be for four. I'm just not that big a fan of it. Um, but I like the Branch Walker a lot. It can be a beefy attacker, can help you filter a bit and, um, you know, do a little bit of fixing, get bigger. And, um, yeah. And obviously you got to keep those two Lords and Glass Pool seems great, you know, with all the Lords and potentially Coco. Coco's obviously not going anywhere. So yeah, it's literally just the Kamenas are iffy and I would add another Kapala. That's all I would say. Rest is up to you. Um, other than that, you can mess with the sideboard, but I was happy with it for the most part. And I just feel like, um, I feel like this deck could 5-0 on a good day. I just feel like we've got a little unlucky. That's it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Those two actions really help the algorithm in the video's performance. And if you are new, consider subscribing. If you enjoy Pioneer and Modern, we do Modern every Monday, Pioneer every Friday. Feel free to leave your feedback and suggestions. What kind of decks do you want to see in the future? Let me know. If you want to check out my second YouTube channel, it's based around the game Destiny 2. Links to that is also down below in the description. And uh, check out our sponsors. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.